Good morning. So I haven't made a video for quite some time. So this is kind of just like a stopgap to keep you guys, um, keep you guys happy. So I'm going to do a, a little bit of a presentation unprepared on a few rare papers that I happen to have in my possession. Now, I did promise a presentation on major papers. Uh, that's a massive job. If you want to find out about all the major papers of physics, I suggest you see how massive it is by going to Wikipedia, going right back to Galileo. In fact, back to Archimedes in 250 BC, where he has a, uh, a writing on the law of flotation. And then right up to the present moment in time. Now, great papers kind of stopped really in, in a I guess before 1970, right? String theory and all that stuff associated with it, supersymmetry and all. You know, um, I'm an admirer of Richard Dawkins. And there's another guy who is very fond of debunking, um, you know, psychics and things like that. He debunked Yuri Geller, I forget his name now. Um, people like that would have a great time dealing with string theory. Unfortunately, they don't understand it, so they can't contradict it, because before you can contradict something, you have to learn the theory, and to learn the theory, to see how bad it is, um, that's hard work, right? Having learned a little bit about it, a little bit of supersymmetry, and certain, a lot of supergravity anyway, and published a few papers in it, uh, I've come to the conclusion that it's mostly hogwash, right? And I try to get back to basics in my own work. So, Fermi was alive today, he would have nothing to do with it. So let's just deal with the papers that I've chosen today to look at. I'm going to, uh, in a separate talk, do some papers, definitive papers on quantum field theory on current space, right? Particularly those by Parker and Parker and Tongs. Phenomenal pieces of work from about the, the 1980s. But also, I might even do this one today. I have two very good papers that you can learn. They're not uh, original papers, they're reviews that teach you the theory of black holes. These are original papers. Now, this is a paper, this is a paper, this is actually um, introductory lectures. So, the very first paper that I want to talk about is actually a paper. Now, the quantum theory of gravity goes way back to even Pauli and Fears, way back into the 30s. But they didn't write down, uh, they didn't ca calculate things. The first attempt to actually calculate quantum mechanical results in quantum gravity, in other words, work out the Feynman rules, and, you know, it's a very tedious job, is actually done by Richard Feynman himself, yet again. Published in 1963. Now, around the same time, I think Bryce DeWitt also worked out Feynman rules independently. But, you know, since I happen to have Feynman's paper, I'm talking about it. Now, the, the paper is extremely difficult to learn from. Feynman doesn't show all his calculations explicitly, but he has done them. Feynman does not lie or make up stories, right? If he says he's done the calculations for a particular diagram and gives the results, then he's done it at home somewhere. The calculations are, for those, massively tedious. R.P. Feynman, the Quantum Theory of Gravitation, one of the very first, published in Acta Physica Polonica, volume 14, 1963. Very rare, very difficult to get hold of. I have no idea where you guys could get it. Absolutely no idea. I've had this for maybe 30 years. The next paper is extremely difficult to get. But once you get these calculations done, then you can start doing quantum fields on curved space and many other things. The work of Parker and Thomas and all the major quantum field theory on curved space are based on this paper. Because what we have here is Peter Gilkey working out the spectral geometry um, of a Riemannian manifold. 
Spectral Geometry of a Riemannian Manifold by Peter Gilkey in the Journal of Differential Geometry, Volume 10, 1975, pages 601 to 618. A very rare paper indeed. It's a mathematical paper, by the way. Physicists would have a hard time dealing with the notation, but he works out what are called the Schwinger de Witt coefficients, right? The Schwinger de Witt coefficients are something I'll talk about someday, or I'll actually I'll talk about it when I'm doing quantum field and curved space. This is a rare, definitive work. A phenomenal milestone in our understanding of applied mathematics. He has another, I actually have two papers here. Now, this is another rare publication. It's not a paper. It's an extract from Les Hoosh session, uh, 29, 1976. And it's an introduction to gauge theories. Very unique approach to gauge theories, whatever gauge theories are. It's a particular type of symmetry, right? Some people say it came from James Joyce as well. Um, Predrag Sitanovich, says James Joyce, uh, has written in Ulysses that Molly Bloom or somebody, who was it? Bloom was standing outside someplace anyway. It's a long story, I won't go into that. It's got some r rare language in it that might not go down too well on YouTube. Anyway, this is a course in gauge theories, yet again, by R.P. Feynman, great man himself. And it's a wonderful course, if you can get your hands on that. If you have a good library, a good science library, you should have these Les Hoosh uh, annual publications from 1976. And this, I guess, came out of the Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies and I photocopied it, right? And he covers classical Yang-Mills theory, a geometric look at gauge invariance, a qualitative critique of quantum chromodynamics. Quantum electrodynamics, by the way, and quantum chromodynamics are really the two gauge theories we're talking about in the, <coughs> in the quantum area. Now, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism is also a gauge theory, but it's gauge theory in a different way. And you could also say, that, argue that um, general relativity is a gauge theory, but really what we're doing is we're focusing in on QED and QCD, where you can use Feynman rules. This paper. So coming up, we can actually do the black holes now because it's going to be easy. There are two um, introductions to the theory of black holes that you can get on the web. Okay? Now you have to watch this. This is an introduction to black hole thermodynamics, so it's the thermodynamics, uh, by G.W. Gibbons. Hawking and Gibbons worked together. And it's notes of, delivered in the 1980 Summers Institute of the Laboratory de Physique in Théorique. Uh, um, it's a French, French stuff anyway. But you can get this on the web. Just Google introduction to black hole thermodynamics by G.W. Gibbons and it should crop up, okay? And a general introduction to the theory of black holes it, themselves, you can't be, I said this before many times, is by Jared Tuft, right? He's got a Nobel Prize for other work, but this is black holes, and it's, you can Google introduction to the theory of black holes by Tuft, Institute of Theoretical Physics in Utrecht. A lot of great physicists in Utrecht, by the way. And this is 2009. Tuft's Introduction to the Theory of Black Holes. So, that's all I have to say on those things, but what I'm going to be able to talk about at greater length the next time is where um, Peter Gilkey's definitive paper leads to. This paper, it leads to a seminal paper by Parker and Toms, published in Physical Review D, volume 29, 1983. And it's called Group 
But now that's not the full title. I have a, a clear, let's see. It's by Parker and Toms anyway. Parker and Toms, and I'll talk about that at length. But the coefficients called the um, Schwinger de Witt coefficients that Gilkey worked out are put into application today. Um, let's see if I have a clearer version of that. I've erased some of the, the title is not here. Group analysis of grand unified theories in curved space time, uh, Physical Review D, volume 29, number 8. 19, I guess, received in 1983, November 1983, but it's published in 1984 in American uh, uh, Physical Review D. Okay. Now, if you want a great exercise, to get to hone your talents in physics, this is what you will do. As an exercise, Now I'm trying to find the right one. Okay, you will duplicate equation number C14 in the appendix, where he works out the vector propagator. There is the expression there. To work out that is a massive job. It will take you maybe 80 pages to do it. And you'll have to use all your talents. Basically, there's a method, and it's a, it's a actually, I have a paper where I do that too, so we'll tell you about that another day. That's enough for this talk right now. Um, there's more coming up.